Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to episode 726. Today we're going to talk about consciousness and defensiveness and how they don't go together. Um, the title officially today is um, Why Defensiveness Doesn't Work and in parentheses what to do instead, so I'll give you a solution, and why consciousness is a continual choice, because it sure is. <laughs> anyway, this, is, and this is, by the way, is part three of a series. I didn't plan on doing a series, but this is actually the third one of a series on the same theme. I'll tell you about those in a minute. Before I jump into the topic, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and why I'm doing this. My name is Barry Selby, in case you hadn't figured that out already. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help women create balance in love, life, and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And I've been doing these talks every day now for quite a long time, and for every day for almost two years. So that's why I'm now at seven, episode number 726. So I've got a bunch of these under my belt now. And today's topic is really, a, in a way, a tying together what I did the last two days. I was talking about this thing, this thing, this topic, this. Um, <laughs> unearthing of some stuff around by some people who've been accused of things who are being very defensive which is why I got defensiveness in the conversation today and I talked about how being conscious requires a certain level of ownership of your own stuff your upset your anger and those sort of feelings because that was part of the conversation I did the last two days so today I'm talking about defensiveness particularly because it's a clue that maybe you're off track and I'll explain what I mean in a moment so let me talk about consciousness in a very simplistic way because that's a very big topic to jump into right here. But consciousness means basically, I would say, is being aware enough to be self-aware and knowing how we interact with the world in a way that is not, um, what's we're looking for? Antagonistic, maybe a word? And also that your, you realize your ego is part of who you are, not all of who you are. Those are probably some, these are, those are building blocks I can start from. So. Your ego is something that is not running you, but you actually have to see it's part of who you are. That's a one key. And to realize that you're in a way that is self-aware enough to be a positive influence in the society, for example. So what's it got to do with defensiveness? To recap one thing I said a few days ago that started this conversation, I was talking about a couple of people who are in the consciousness movement, leaders in personal growth seminars, teachings, that sort of thing, who were basically being accused of, confronted with, and called out for doing certain things that were not respectful to other people. In particular, in both instances, they were um, being accused by women. And with the Me Too conversation, it definitely has hit home in the, in the consciousness movement, as well as in the political movement and the entertainment industry, and etc. etc. What I'm aware of with both of these individuals was there was a responsiveness Sorry, there was a response of defensiveness. I had the wrong ness on the wrong word. <laughs> a, a, a defensiveness that showed up where they were basically saying, no, I didn't, no, I didn't, no, I didn't, which is defensive. Rather than saying, which is what I talked about a couple of days ago as well, and this is one of the solutions by way to defensiveness. Actually, let me, let me move it out of that to present moment. If someone does accuse you of something or attack you with some accusation or, which is accusing you as well, yeah, or it just says things about you that are not accurate. The temptation may be to say, I'm not that, I'm okay, I'm, uh, that's not true, that's, that's, bull that's baloney, that's because it's bullshit, you can say it too. But what if there's another way? Because by doing that, you're not necessarily, and this thing I've discovered for myself, when I try to deny something someone accuses me of, it doesn't always cancel it out. In fact, sometimes it seems to reinforce their vitriol and their leverage to make it sound like it's actually true even when it's not, and I fight against it. So what I'm aware of now, in hindsight, which I'm hoping to help you with by seeing this, is a way to be less, de to be less defensive or non-defensive and be more aware is to ask the person where they got their information from or what is what has inspired their feelings of this to be true. In the case of these two men around these women, what they might have said instead was, um, like maybe you say, like, I don't remember that, I'm, I'm not sure I did that. Can you, can you tell me more about what you're saying so I know where I can be accountable? Because accountability is part of being conscious too, by the way. That change of framework, first of all, disarms a lot of the energy because it's actually not denying and basically pushing against the other person, which is creating the discord and the raised upset and temperature. 
It's a way of actually being more receptive and being more conscious at the same time. Now, I said consciousness is a continual um, choice because it's not something that is guaranteed to stick. <laughs> Speaking for myself, and I, as I said, I've been, I've been on this journey now since uh, the end of 1984 intentionally. Um, well, was, it, was, it, was it intentional? I guess it was intentional. My first seminars back in 84. I've done a lot of work since then. But I also know at times I've been very clearly unaware and, un and, and unconscious, so to speak, of my participation in conversations in the world and interactions. Even recently, I've noticed myself do things and go, ooh, that wasn't very conscious or caring or awake. So I'm saying consciousness is a continual journey because it's like you don't become suddenly enlightened and you just elevate and then you're fine. Maybe in some Middle, you know, Middle Eastern teachings that might be true, but in, in the consciousness movement that the personal growth industry for most people who are aware of this, and there's awareness about it is the key, is they realize that we slip down the slope again. We climb up, we slip down a bit. It's like two steps forward, one step back, or we, we are very great and we're doing wonderful things. And I would suggest that it's our ego trying to remind us to be humble, which is so reverse psychology because our ego wants to think, doesn't think about humility, it's always going to be in charge. But what I'm aware of is when, for me at least, when these are going great in so many different ways, in my interactions, my communications, my relationships, my personal, um, what do you call it, mental and emotional hygiene, I think is the word they use for it. When I'm doing that great, at some point, it seems to be a habit that happens. I'm not confirming it's going to keep happening, but it has happened. Well, I'll do something actually, I won't say, well, I say it's stupid, but it's something that basically is not demonstrating what I already know and what I'm already being. And I may say something inappropriate or do something that was not really clean in terms of I didn't like clean up my mess or take responsibility for something. Like I might do something totally sideways from that. That's the reminder to get back on the, the, the bus, so to speak, to get back on the um, path of waking up, staying present and choosing every moment to be more conscious. There was, a, I remember a quote from years ago now that was said by one of my teachers about the price of the price of a consciousness, the price of awareness, or the requirement. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to remember the quote exactly. I'm not sure. I don't, what I remember very clearly was saying about it was about you. It's about eternal vigilance. So it's something like you know you can't rest on your laurels when you're doing this work and you're growing and you're becoming more aware and conscious. It requires you to be present and conscious all the time. Like no surprise. So getting back to the defensiveness piece. If you are experiencing in any of your conversations, interactions, relationships, a feeling where you want to be defensive, because I'm going to make this personal now, not just about those two men I was talking about. But since I was talking about me, let's talk about you. <laughs> if you found yourself in places where you've become more um, defensive in some interaction where you basically somebody said something, did something, told you something, accused you of something, and you reacted by being defensive, my suggestion, is, as I said, as I said earlier, is to be more inquiring than defensive, because defensiveness basically puts you down at the level where it came from. It's like the, the um, no, that doesn't fit here. So I think the quote doesn't fit. So I'm letting it go. So if you are consciously awake and caring, and this person accuses you at this level, to give you a visual reference of this, when you get defensive, you do this. You drop down to that level where basically it's going to be an argument and it's going to be a battle and it's going to be confrontive and ineffective. When you are aware enough to go, hang on a second, what is going on here? You're actually elevating them to be more interactive and ask questions that can give you answers that can then get to a better resolution. So instead of fighting, you come into cooperation. And that's a choice. And the other person may not want to play that game because it may be a game to them. But the option is there for you if you choose to into it each time. Because the reality is, when you stay, it's like when you take the high road, to use some other metaphors, they have the choice to come at the high road as well or stay on the low road. Not to say you're ignoring what they're saying. What I'm, what I'm actually saying is you're going to inquire and find out where they're coming from. What is really driving their accusation or their charge or their upset? So that way you can be, a, one, one, you can be accountable if it is true. And two, you can redirect if it's not true. There are ways of doing that too. That's a different level of conversation. But I want to make, make this, um, this point <laughs> clear that defensiveness is not a conscious choice. It's, a sub, it's an unconscious choice. It's almost like an egoic 
reaction because in the consciousness conversation, as I said at the beginning, one of the keys of being conscious in, a, in, awake, in this awake state is to realize your ego is not running the ship and your ego is not in charge. But defensiveness is absolutely an egoic response because the reason why you're defensive is because you somehow feel you're being attacked on a personality level, which is where your ego lives. And by the way, I'm just speaking as it comes through, so I'm trusting that what I'm getting to is actually an accurate description because I don't want to make this a false teaching. So, interesting. <laughs> I'm watching myself witness this whilst I'm saying it, so it's just interesting to explain it. So again, <laughs> okay then. So, so, when you are noticing defensiveness, that is the ego's attachment to being okay, to being approved of to be worthy to be deserving all those different things when you're in your in, when you're doing conscious work you realize those are just simply just just flavors they're not the truth because who you are when you know you're conscious is you already are worthy you already are okay so anything that attacks that isn't about you and this is one of those things that gets to be an interesting dance to play when somebody's upset it's their upset not yours so when you get reactive and you start defensive that's basically them enrolling you into their upset that's not conscious and it's not very healthy either so if that person's upset, you don't need to get upset with them. That's another part of this journey, by the way. I should have put that in yesterday's broadcast. That would have fit there. Anyway, it's in this one today. So this piece, this teaching, this, this understanding is that when you start to learn how to be responsive versus reactive and observant versus blind, you get to see where things are out of alignment, where things do fit or where they don't fit, and you'll have the ability to respond to that accuser, so to speak, for a much more um, calm and witnessing place so you can find out what's really going on. Because they may be upset about something they got, they may even be accusing you of something, for example, than before, which because something they heard, not something they witnessed. So they actually don't have real basis. And when you find out that information, you don't go, see, I told you so. No, you don't do that either. That's ego as well. But when they start to realize what they are talk, accusing you of is something they just heard from somebody else, then you can encourage them to perhaps realize that it might not be true. In fact, the other person may need to present their own case for this argument. This is the dance of consciousness. This is the opportunity to play at a much higher level of consciousness, to play in a level where it isn't about defensiveness and arguing and upset and limitation. It's a place of understanding, cooperation and collaboration. This is the journey we're on if we're growing and becoming more evolutionary and more um, able to function in this world because this world right now is very much about againstness and challenging i totally understand that so this is an indication that there's room for us to change so i hope it's been of use to you this is this as i said is the third video or third talk in a series i didn't plan on doing I started two days ago three days ago two days ago yesterday and day before this is this is episode 726 so 724 25 and 26 combined covers this range of talks so if you want to watch the whole thing from the beginning i would start with that one actually i'll put the links i'll put the links below so you can actually see the first two broadcasts in the series again they were not planned to be related just one stepped in one came through then another one came through then this one came through so this this may be the end of it we'll see so if it's been of use to you great i appreciate any feedback comments thoughts you have below you can let me know what you think um i will besides leaving links in the comments um yeah comments for the replays of those two broadcasts i also put a link in there for a, for a contact form. You can reach out for more conversation. If you're looking for ways to get support and you want to go deeper in your own journey of self-consciousness, self -consciousness, self-awareness and consciousness, I'll leave a link in there for a contact form so you can reach out to me as well. Um, that should keep me busy for, the, for now. This is my daily Facebook Live, by the way. Every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time, right here on my personal page. Well, if you're watching on personal page, it's right here, which is facebook.com facebook forward slash Barry Selby. The replays are on my business page and on my YouTube channel. And the links for that, my business page on Facebook is barryselby.author. You, you can like that page and watch them all there, mainly because my personal page has more stuff on it besides my Facebook Lives. My business page has mostly just the Facebook Lives on it. And on my YouTube channel is just my Facebook Lives in YouTube format. So on YouTube, you can find me at Barry Selby. The playlist, and by the way, subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. I'd like to get more than a few people watch, um, following me. <laughs> Selfish interest. So that totally was egoic. Um, 
So Barry Selby is my channel on, on YouTube and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Okay, I think that made my point. I hope it's been of use to you. If it has been of use, please let me know that as well. I appreciate any likes, love, comments, questions, thoughts, because I want to make sure this is landing. This is a value to you. And uh, hopefully it is. With that, thank you for watching. I'll be back again tomorrow at the same time, same channel. And there's something else to talk about. We'll see what comes up. So appreciate you being with me. As always, I invite you to take care of yourself. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.